Hello there, this is Superring, and this is part two of the animation video series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get uh, a script called Mesa working. This allows you to export animations as .smd, which uh, lets it be imported into Smashforge correctly. Technically, you could use the Noesis program I showed you in the previous video to uh, convert a uh, animation format from like an FBX or something to SMD but uh, I've done that before and it actually sometimes has errors so just having it do it correctly the first time from Maya's is going to help you save some time um, so let's start with that also for people who, who may not have Maya or trying to use Blender if you're a college student you can get a copy of Maya for free. Uh, if you want to try and use Blender, you can. You could try. Um, like I said, that Noesis program can form or convert formats to .smd. Uh, as far as I know, Blender doesn't have a way to export to that format directly itself. So you might run into problems there, and I'm not too familiar with Blender. All my videos are going to be through Maya, but uh, just a little FYI there. So we need to get Maya. So you, I'll have the link to this website in the description. You can download it here, get your copy. And once it's all extracted and everything, this is what it's going to look like. You have a folder called Mesa. You want to open that. When you have the download it extracted and everything, you have a file like this. You, when you open it, create a folder that just says Mesa, doesn't have the version number, and drop all the files in there. I think Maya can have trouble finding uh, the scripts and everything for it if there's a version number by it. So just make sure to put everything in this specifically where it just says Mesa. And this, this uh, site is also a tutorial, so it might be more informative than I am. Basically, uh, you extract the file, the downloaded file, and there's one specific file that says config. If you right-click that and hit edit, this is where you edit the paths where Maya will look for the different folders and things. Uh, also, side note, you may need to have Steam to get this to work. Uh, I already have Steam downloaded. I think you can, I might be able to work without it um, because it is just like a script, which is all contained, you know, in the folder you downloaded. I don't think it needs any tools from Steam, but uh, the tutorial will tell you that it needs it. I don't think you do, but. Uh, that's just uh, that's just my experience with it. Anyways, like it says, we need to change the the destination that it's looking for these files. So this one, first one, it's looking for Mesa. So I have that directed to uh, that specific folder. So uh, if you go here, oh, oops. If you go here, uh, so you have the make sure you have it in that specific Mesa file without the version number behind it. Then click up here. You can copy and paste. That's what mine looks like. Steam when you if you do have Steam, it'll already be automatically extracted to that destination. Don't really need to change that. And then the Maya version, this is what I have mine set to, 2018, 64-bit. So that's what I have mine set to. Once you have all the destinations set up and everything, then uh, you have to run the bat file uh, and install the shelf. So follow the rest of the directions in here. It's pretty straightforward. You should have it working. Once you do have 
Mesa installed on Maya, you'll have uh, one of these tabs will be Mesa here. The only thing we'll all really need is just this third one from the left, SMD options. So, and uh, it'll have something that looks like this. And we'll get into more on how to use Mesa later, just making sure that uh, you have that working. <clears throat> so next, let's see. All right, so now you've got Mesa working. That will be helpful when you've got your animation created and when you're ready to export it. That's when it will come useful. Next, I'm going to show you how to source a character. This is useful. If there's already an animation in like another Smash Brothers game that you wanted to to port back to Melee, so in this example, I'll be using that Ganon model I extracted, and I'm also going to be sourcing the Smash Ultimate Ganondorf. If you want to get all the animations and models from uh, Smash Ultimate. There is something called Studio SB. It's made by the same guy who made Smash Forge. I'll have a link to that below. And you'll also need to have this, uh, what is this called? Microsoft Visual Studio. You can get pick this up for free as well. Uh, this is used to compile the program that uh, the creator made. He didn't compile it for some reason, I guess, makes it easier to update. But uh, you'll need this to run it. And once um, once you have Studio Visual Studio up and running and you selected the you selected Studio SB, there's like a gray I'm sorry, a green play button here. You click on that to open. And you'll get something like this, very similar to Smash Forge. So I've got uh, Ganon. There was a folder, there was a file that's ripped all the models and animations. Uh, I'll, if I find it, I can't remember where I got it, but if I find it, I'll post the link to that in the description as well. But I've got Ganondorf here. We want to export him as a T-Pose first. It makes it easier to source him as a character. So we'll do Scene to File, since no animation is loaded. Let's just do t Alt model Ganon. Oh, oops, hold on. When you export it, you have to do .smd, or else you'll get this. Uh, different file type. We don't really need all that. Okay, and let's say in this case I want to I want to have his forward smash. So here we go. These are all the different animations. We're looking for attack. S four. Yep, there we go. And we'll export that as well. Animation to file. Do end in dot smd. You'll need that program again, the Noesis, to convert from the smd file type. So boom, we got Smash Ultimate's model. Just, I guess you technically, well, actually, yeah, you do want to have the model because you can't really get a T pose without it. The T pose makes it makes it easier to source his model. So yeah, uh, do FBX. It's the universal file for animations and models and stuff. It's best one I've, the one that I use seems to work best. 
and then I just also just exported the forward smash animation. And then uh, if you have the same file as before, if you're following along, if you wanted to, um, we're exporting. I want to export Ganondorf's T pose from Smash Forge, so we'll export that. So we've got the Melee Ganon model exported, Ultimate Ganon model exported, and we've got the animation we want hit Ultimate Ganon's forward smash. So let's import this all to a scene. Let's start with Melee Ganon, which is here. And ultimate. Okay. As you can see, the poses are slightly different. We want them to be as close as possible for this when we source the animation for that to work right. So we need to. I'm going to move Melee again in just a little bit. Um, one thing you might run into is like this the rotation or tool might be big, too big, or too small. Just hit the plus or minus keys to change the size. If you have it bigger, it actually moves things more finely. Anyways, there's that. So Melee Ganon is a similar pose. So now we need to define his character. What we need to do is... Uh, this little icon of a person in the top right corner, click on create character definition. And what we're going to do is match up each of these um, different icons to the bones on the model. Or, yeah, to the bones on the model. So let's start with Melee Ganon. That's his head, neck. We want to make sure that, because Ultimate Ganon's model is not going to be the same as Melee Ganon's, we want to make sure like the corresponding bones are this, like, same position. So hand, as you can see, like, um, in the arm, don't select this bone here. Select this one. That one is the one you want to change. As you can see, if you move it, just his hand moves in a weird way. So don't don't use that one. Use this one instead. That's the one you want. Arms and things are pretty one to one between the two models, surprisingly. So that's pretty easy to pick up on. Sometimes while doing this, you might get like the arm might turn red or red or yellow. If it's red, just hover over it. It'll usually tell you what's wrong. If it's yellow, it just means like there might be a problem. It doesn't always mean that there is though. Uh, you can still lock the character if it's yellow, and I'll sh I'll show you what that means in a sec. Uh, one other thing, so this bottom one is kind of like the master, which moves the entire model. This is going to, we want this to be bone number one, and that's going to be on every melee character. And this is going to match up to the bone that says trans on the ultimate model. But now this is all green. We're not going to source all the fingers just because... Because the model sizes are different, not everything is going to translate one to one. The proportions are off. So I'm going to be animating the fingers myself. Um, so yeah, we're going to lock that. So that's good. Now we hit this little plus sign here to start another one. We need to do 
ultimate Ganon now. Well, once you've done sourcing everything, you'll have something that looks like this. Character 1 for us is Melee Ganon. We're going to have him source character 2, because that is Ultimate Ganon. We select all of Ultimate Ganon's bones, and we need to import that forward smash we had. Okay, and let me get this sword out of the way, too. And hide that by pressing Control H. Okay, so now we have Melee Ganon matching Ultimate Ganon, as you can see. But all it's doing right now is mimicking it. It actually doesn't have any frames saved on its own, so we have to do let's, we have to bake the animation. Go to this drop down arrow, go to animation key, then bake. Make sure you have all the bones selected, by the way. Okay, so now it's actually not copying Ultimate Ganon anymore, so we can just delete it. Uh, we've got to delete this mesh too, get that out of the way. I deleted melee on accident. There we go. So now he doesn't need to copy anymore because we baked his animation. So, so now all we need to do is just touch up this animation. As you can see, we didn't, I didn't source the fingers, so we need to animate those. And his feet, because the pro, the proportions are off, are gonna clip through the floor and not look right. We still have some things we need to touch up, but this has a lot of the work of the legs and spine and arms moving that we don't have to do ourselves which is really helpful all right so now that we got that I'll end this video here and we'll see you in part three